Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage. I'm Sean. I'm Tanil. This is the show where we watch every single theatrical movie in chronological order. All the good ones and all of the bad ones and the all really the bad ones. And all the yikes content in between. Today we're in between. They're usually below the bad ones. I mean, yeah. But they are the bad ones. Yeah. Anyways, today we're watching Galaxy Express Express 39. 999, but yeah, it's not pronounced 39. It's pronounced three 999 nine because it's three nines, so it's 39. Japanese English lingo. Double 99. Nine. What? Triple 99. Nine. Yeah, but double 99. Nine. <laughs> this was brought to us by Toy of Japan. And um, I want to say thank you, Board Artist, for sending us the DVD of this movie. Yeah, actually, so, we just got this in the mail like a month ago or a, less. A couple days ago. So shameless plug, if you want to find movies on our animation pilgrimage list and you can find physical copies of them, you can send them to us. Or you can just like... Or if you know of a copy to find online, you can email it to the yeah. Animation Pilgrimage link. We really appreciate it. Yeah, both of those are on the Animation Pilgrimage uh, watch list and then the movie and game collection list, both in the description of this video. Yeah. For mailing information and stuff like that. So anyway, thank you, board artists, for sending us this movie. But We hated it. Yeah, but oh my <laughs> God, was it bad. <laughs> I like how we're like, thanks, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> and you might be thinking, but why do you hate it? This is by the same person. This is by the same mangaka that created... Space Battleship Yamato, one of which your favorite I movies love. last year. If not your favorite. Last year and like the year that the first one came. Yeah, yeah. Space Battleship Yamato is an amazing space opera about boats in space, and it's super serious, and the end is, ends of the Earth, and we have to save it and stuff. Well, and, like, talking about, like, the futility of war, and, you know, it's got some deep context and themes and stuff in there. All that stuff we just love. <laughs> and this is a movie about a space train. So we're going to Space Wild West. Okay, it does that, but only sometimes, and it's done poorly. And we'll get to all of it. How about we just start into a story synopsis, because there is a lot, because it's a two-hour movie. Yeah, I mean, okay, I do kind of want to preface this by, I definitely think Space Battleship Yamato has aged better than this franchise, but this franchise was doing just as well, if not better than Space Battleship Yamato, okay. when it released. That's fair. So, like, I think that's important to put in context. It's like, people were hyped to see this. Yeah. Because... And now I don't feel like anybody really talks about this, considering I barely found anything about mm -hmm. this movie or like recent reviews or people talking about it in general, which means it hasn't really left like a lasting impact. Compared to Yamato. Yeah. I guess other context, mm -hmm. this mangaka created uh, Space Battleship Yamato, but then they went on to write, write some other stuff like... And to be clear, a mangaka is the artist of the manga... Yeah, the manga artist then... Not the show yeah. or the movie. Yeah, and then the rights for the animated versions are picked up by studios and they do that stuff. Mm -hmm. But the mangaka often has some amount of input, usually not a lot, unfortunately. Yeah, with... he had some influence. Yeah, but like here. they... That's because they don't have a lot of... Just because they don't have a lot of influence, the animated versions almost exclusively will just take directly from the manga. Mm -hmm. They might condense it a bit because they have to when they make a show or something, or they'll f throw in a lot of filler. Filler is a, is a known quantity when getting into animated adaptations of manga. Right. Not as much usually when you get into movies. Yeah. Sometimes. Movies less so. That being said, some franchises, their movies are literally just... Filler the movie. Filler the movie. It's none of this is canonical. This is all just a fun spin-off. 
nothing that happens in this movie is real type right, of things. The, um, Dragon Ball Z movie. Dragon Ball Z, or the Boku no Hero Academia yes. one that we... That it's apparent, technically canon, but like... Yeah, they don't mention it. It's a it. pretty fillery Yeah, they, for the most B part, they plot. don't mention it. Yeah, anyway. Synopsis time. Let's go. This is going to be a longer one. Not yet. Oh. Like, we're going to continue down this train of, like, the manga and stuff. Train? Choo-choo. Choo-choo. <laughs> so, this mangaka, I don't know the exact order. I'm going to put the information on on the interweb, or, like, on the, screen. on the screen so you know which order these came in. But they wrote two more mangas after that, both set in the same universe. As Galaxy Express... Well, that, three nine. Well, one of them was Galaxy Express three nine, mm -hmm. and the other one was Space Pirate Harlock. I I can give a little bit more context here. Okay, the mangaka wrote Space Battleship Yamato. Farewell to Space Battleship Yamato was coming out as the first season of the anime of Space Pirate, Pirate Captain Harlock. Yes, was ending. Okay. And then they made this movie. Which is based on a different manga, but set in the same universe yes. as Pirate Har Space Captain Pirate Harlock, whatever the hell his name is. Yeah. So this universe has not only space trains, but space pirates, pirates in like boats, like space boat pirates. And it's also important to note that while... We are only watching this movie. This is obviously a large universe with many, like, different medias going into it. The mangaka, the anime series, and the movies. And we are only experiencing the movies. So this is coming from the perspective of people who are who have only seen this film and not any of the other material. Yes. So it's a outsider looking in... And does this movie stand up as a standalone film? Yeah. Without any of the other context. Right. Spoilers, I don't think it does. It tries. It tries. It has a lot of setup and a lot of payoff for ideas and themes, and they're all terrible. It definitely feels like a film, but I just don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, editor Sean here. This is obviously recorded after we did the rest of it. Here's a little bit more context. I did the research and now I know exactly how all of this went down. So in 1974, there was a TV show being created called Space Battleship Yamato. This was a joint effort between Reiji Matsumoto, who is the mangaka that we know here. He is the art direction and creator of this, this movie and this world that we're about to experience. Uh, he did the art direction on Space Battleship Yamato. He did not, in fact, write Yamato. Instead, that was Yoshinobu Nijizaki, which probably explains some of our issues that we have with this particular movie. We'll get into that in a little bit. But 1974, Space Battleship Yamato becomes a thing, and it goes off and is wildly popular. But... Matsumoto really likes space stuff, so he decides to write two new mangas also set in space, but for legal reasons, he's not allowed to use Yamato uh, because it's his own thing as compared to owned by a company thing. So instead, he starts writing Space Pirate Captain Harlock and Galaxy Express 3-9, both set in the exact same universe, both in that started in 1977. Both of them become wildly popular because he's the guy that worked on Yamato. Everybody loves that, of course, right? Of course, cool. 1978, Space Pirate Captain Harlock is turned into a TV show. By this point, Yamato has been serialized into a movie and Farewell Space Battleship Yamato has come out. People love it, hate it, whatever. Studios are like, all right, Harlock is a TV show. We're going to make Galaxy Express 39 into a movie. We're going to capitalize on it. It's going to be great. And that's where we are. Just figured I'd give you guys some of that context. Now back to the review. Anyway, let's all get right. into it. Now that we've got all that context out of the way, let's actually talk about what this movie is about. What the hell the space trains are on about? All right. So there is a small boy that... 
Orphan boy. An orphan boy that lives in the slums of Super Robot City whatever on Earth. And he decides that he's going to look like Space Captain Harlock, who is just like a known outlaw of the universe. So he just wants to emulate him. And he wants to get on the the train, Galaxy Express Triple or 39. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for reasons that we don't know exactly yet. And he does so by murderizing a robot cop. For context, this universe has robots in it who are people that have abandoned their human bodies and now live inside robots. And as long as they keep up to date on like their fixing their bodies, they can live forever. This is a known thing. It's incredibly, egregiously expensive, so only the rich can do it. Poor people are humans, and that's how it is. And they die. They die. And that's that sucks, because you you want to live forever, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously. Yeah, and, like, the... For further context, the film doesn't present any problems with the robot bodies. Yeah, like it's just kind of like you a, just transfer your soul over to a robot body, and then you live forever. That's and then you amazing. live forever as so long as you keep up with uh, updates and maintenance and stuff. But mm-hmm. it costs a lot to do, so not everybody can do it. Exactly. So the reason he wants to get on the Galaxy Express three nine is because there is a planet out there that is the home robot planet or something. It's a completely roboticized planet that if you go there. You just get a robot body for free. Doesn't matter how expensive you are. Or, poor you are. How uh, poor you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the problem is to get a ticket onto this train is incredibly expensive. And the train only comes to Earth like... At once every year. Yeah. Because it goes throughout space to a bunch of different planets and stuff. Mm-hmm. So the kid tries to steal a pass to get on this train. And he fights and kills a robot policemen and they're chasing him down and he is helped by this blonde this blonde woman that you know looks like exactly like every other blonde woman that this mangaka has ever drawn yep uh this lady's name is maytel and she is just here to help him she's like yeah I'll help you kid I'll help you get to the robot planet when he first sees her he's like <gasps> mom, mom? And then he's like, no, that's not mom. And then we get a flashback to him and his mom, who are both poor, walking through the snow. And they accidentally, like, they're trying to get to the robot city so that they can work up and get money to get robot bodies so they can live forever because that's what everybody wants. Mm -hmm. And they accidentally wander into a human hunting zone of Count Robot. I don't remember what his... Seems like Count Mecha or something. Yeah, it's literally just some sort of Count Robot or something. And it's just a zone on the planet that if you wander into it as a human, you get hunted for sport. Yay! So mom dies. Yeah. Mom gets hunted and the dude is like, wow, this is a beautiful specimen. I'll hang her on my wall. Which is gross. (laughs) So boy has sworn revenge and this is his... This is his reason for trying to get a robot body. He wants to get a robot body, so then he'll be strong enough to take out this Count Mecha guy. Yeah. Robot Count. Yeah. Gotta kill him by becoming a robot myself. Yeah. Maytel is like, sure, here's a pass. You can go to the planet. I just have to go with you. Wait. Maytel has also seen this dream flashback. Yeah, because she has a dream spying... Thing. Chip. Mm-hmm. She has a dream spying chip that she put on the boy, and the boy walks in on her taking an important phone call while she's also bathing in a shower. Okay. Um. And she. It's he, a weird freak over... out because he doesn't see the phone. It's just the shower head. So it's like, where's the phone? We'll he find overhears. Out yeah. A okay. guy, a conversation between Maytel and some guy being like, you know, we'll make sure you don't lose sight of this kid. Stay by his side 24-7. And we'll talk later. She does a real good job at this. We'll just <coughs> put that down there. Right. 
All right, we get on the train. We get on the we train. finally get on the train. Madel and this boy are on the train, and I already have so many bad vibes. Because, like... But I'm not going to get into it right now. It just feels uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. This movie feels weird and uncomfortable. Makes me uncomfy. So, we go to the first planet, which is Titan, which is a moon of Jupiter. And it's the Wild West. Woohoo! There are no rules. Murder is okay, and you can do what you want. And so, obviously, Maytel gets kidnapped immediately because she's a beautiful woman. Cool. Mm. Great. I love it. So the boy is picked up by old lady, and she's like, You remind me of my son, so have this super space gun and this hat, and become a little desperado, kid. Because you remind me of my son, and these were his when he before he left. This is so random. It's weird and random, but it actually is a fan service thing, and we'll get into it. <laughs> so we go. So kid goes off because he's told where the evil bandits are located. He saves a small child from a robot, and the leader of the bandits is also there. And he's like, we hate robots, so we destroy and kill all robot people we find. And we kidnap the girl because we needed to make sure she wasn't a robot. Spoilers, she's not a robot because they use an x-ray scanner and nobody's a robot. And the leader of this has like a bunch of unexploded explosive bullets in his stomach. That'll become relevant later. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, we take care of this all the- This is a bunch of shrapnel. It's kind of hilarious. <laughs> We take care of all the orphan children that were killed by robots in the area. And I'm just like, okay. Oh, specifically killed by Count Mecha Robot Man. Yeah. Because he just runs around killing people, apparently. Apparently. It, it's a known quantity. So he's like, good luck. Sorry for the kidnapping. Have fun with your super space gun that can kill robots. Because normal guns don't work. Yeah, okay, yeah. The, the old lady gives... She's not even an old lady. The, 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 the mother of the desperado has given our protagonist a super space gun that apparently is, like, one of the only guns that can kill robot people. I think it's the only, like, a model. And I think you're reading into it as, in like, it's this one single no, no, gun no, no, that can no. do it. No, but like, it's still... Bullshit, okay? Yeah, it's it's like, still, like, even if it's only a model, type model of a gun that's, like, rare and hard to come by, how is it the only weapon that can kill robot people? Yeah, it's I call dumb. bullshit, man. Anyways, we get back on the train, mm -hmm. and we move on. I guess the guy also tells him how to find... Count Robot, who lives inside the Time Caps Castle, which teleports around the universe. Yeah. Of course it does. Mm -hmm. He needs to find a pirate captain, Esmeralda's. Yes. Okay. So we're on the train. We guess what he? Pluto. Guess what he does? No wait. You're right. You're right. We go to Pluto next. Yeah, we go to Pluto. Pluto next. is the next thing that happens. Yeah. All right. We go to Pluto, which is freezing cold and everybody hates it there and it's awful. But and it's like Russia, I guess. Yeah. We're no longer in the Wild West. We're in like Russia now for because it's cold. So it's Russia, obviously. Uh, uh. I don't know. It's more fitting with Maytel's costuming. And Maytel's immediately like, Hey, just don't wander out of the city limits. I gotta go do something. I gotta go do a thing. You know, because she's really good at, like, staying with staying the kid 24-7. Staying with the kid 24-7, yeah. So the kid follows <laughs> her, and she has wandered onto a field of ice that has a bunch of frozen dead people in it. Mm -hmm. But they're not all dead, as we're told by Shadow. Uh... Ice cold... Faceless... A faceless, ice-cold robot woman who has regrets for becoming a robot woman, so she has her human body in a special ice case, and uh, she tells us that anybody that has died of sickness or has given up their bodies to become robots, those bodies are stored in the ice here, 
So often robots will come by and look at their ba old body and be sad. For reasons. For I reason. don't understand this. And they imply, too, that, like, you can just get your body back. Yes. Like, like yeah, there's, you become a there robot is if you're no body. downside to being a robot. You can just say, like, you know what? I, I think, actually, like, spiritually, emotionally, I don't think this whole robot thing is for me. I think I'd rather just die and live my life as a human. Like... That's totally fine. You, you can, can do you that. You can transfer back. Yeah, you can get your there body back. There is no back. moral dilemma here. There is, and it's framed as such, but we know that people can get their human bodies back. So right. this is not an issue if you are rich enough. Right. So, like, yeah, that should be the problem, but it's not. Um, but no, the shadow character is, like, hanging out with her body because she's like, oh my God, I was so beautiful, but I want to live forever, but I could never make a robot body as beautiful as my human body. So I just haunt this place so that I can live forever. But if I went back into my human body, then I would age and be ugly. And since I am a female character in this universe, that would be worse than death. Yeah. So instead, I live a tortured life. Like It's real dumb. <laughs> so Maytel is like... Maytel comes piss over off. and yeah, tells her to piss off. And, and also, everybody seems to know Maytel. Everybody seems to know Maytel. And every woman this kid comes by has a real uncomfortable interaction with him. Yeah. And we'll get more on that as we continue going. Yeah. So we're done with Pluto now. We get back on the train and Kid is like, man, robot ladies are creepy and weird and awful and gross. And then he meets a naked glass robot lady that works in the train serving food. Why is she naked? Why is she naked? No other robot is naked. Every other robot wears clothes. Anyways, this girl's plot is that her mom bought her a robot body and now she's working on the train to pay it off. And she wants to then get her old body back. So she's the one that introduces the concept of being able to get your old body back. Mm -hmm. And she's okay because she's warm. Apparently. Even though her body's made of glass. It's made of glass, and she's like, I'm see-through, and it's terrible, and I also don't have a mouth or really a distinguished face. But for some reason, I'm cool and hot. As compared to Shadow. Evil Shadow. God, they bring I it just... up in the movie as how contra like how contradictory it contradictory is. this is, and then she's like, Yes, it is. This is dumb. <laughs> this is really dumb. But she can also glow in the dark because she can, like, <laughs> superheat her body. Is that why she's naked? For the two times they go, they could potentially go through what, are they space like space tunnels. Frying eggs on her? What's the point? Yeah, they're like... How hot does she get? It's really dumb. <laughs> they also happen to come across Esmeralda's in her space pirate ship which is literally just a wooden pirate ship in space underneath a giant blimp of a spaceship which they apparently don't use to be inside of it because they only ever use like the cannons from the space uh, from the ship part like okay space battleship yamato is already silly with you know like reworking an old world war ii battleship to be a spaceship but like my suspension of disbelief goes that far, you know? Like, that works. Yeah. Like, but, like, like I, can, I can excuse that. But, like, it's a, a train, train and a pirate ship. And blimp! It's a, it's a blimp pirate ship. In space! On screen at the same time. Like, if you want to do trains, do trains. If you want to do boats, do boats. Don't do both at the same time. That's where my suspension of disbelief really starts to break down in this universe. Right. Because there seems to be very, very little that, like, makes it spacey. Because, you know, like, take take a, take Treasure Planet, for mm -hmm. example. They specifically, when designing the universe, had a 70-30 rule. Where 
70% could be like the the time period of like the golden age of piracy. Mm-hmm. And then the 30% was like the steampunk aesthetic space stuff to make it work. Yes. This doesn't do that. It's no. literally just a wooden pirate ship kind of like boom, onto the bottom of this huge ass space blimp thingy. Right. Anyway, our protagonist shoots Sh- a bullet through, through the, the glass, glass of the ship, but it's fine because the you- train. The train. The train. Okay, so this train has like a special barrier ward around it, which means there's technically- You're the, assuming that. They mentioned something real offhanded at the very beginning. They're like, oh, it's super high tech train. You can roll the windows down. You can push the windows up and down. It's fine, even though it's space. So shooting a laser and shattering the glass doesn't immediately kill everybody on the the space train. I guess it's fine. Well, the the thing is, the conductor's even like... Shown like... What the hell are you doing? Well, it's more so what the hell are you doing shooting the space pirates. Uh Uh-huh. Because they fire back. They don't shoot the ship, but they're just like, how dare you? And then Esmeraldas comes on board... And it's just... She looks the exact same as all the other girls, but she's she's got got a scar and red hair. Yeah, and I feel like this might be a... I have a very strong suspicion this character is from Space Pirate Battleship Captain Harlock. The the, the, the third. The third. (laughs) Because, like... Yeah, I I agree. I feel like she is a she is character a fan of that. service character that has shown up, and she's like, "How dare you shoot my blimp?" Well, okay, no, no. She boards the train because she's like, "Who shot my ship?" And the kids, I like, gotta know who was ballsy enough to do that. And so the kids like, "It was me," and she shoots his gun out of his hand with her rapier pistol. <laughs> his gun looks so silly. <laughs> And then she's like, where did you get that gun? It belongs to my lover. And that hat. Yeah, that gun and that hat belong to my lover. And I'm just like, oh my God. I have no idea what you're talking about, lady. So you're, the kid is very clearly cosplaying. It's a small universe, I guess. Yeah. That the Desperado kid that went off from the old lady happened to interact with Esmeralda's. I wonder if he's a character from Space Battleship Harlock. Captain Baby. (laughs) Just add more titles to it. (laughs) So she's like, oh yeah, I know how to find the time castle. It'll be on, conveniently, your next stop on the the train. Yeah, glad we talked. Yeah, so... Because I'm sure that the locals at the next stop couldn't have told you that. Also... Esmeraldas is like a hard badass until she finds out that her her d- d- old boyfriend was a thing that existed. And so she gets all mopey and sad that she's not with her man. Mm-hmm. And then she leaves. Mm. That's it. That's all she does. Yeah. So we go to a random Wild West town on made up planet, I think. Yeah, it I mean, doesn't. it's already outside Pluto, so who knows? It could be a planet. It could be it real. Could be it real, could be real. It could not. be not. I wouldn't know. It doesn't matter. But on this planet, there are just aliens. Aliens hadn't been introduced up to this point. Yeah. Really. And there's robots that... Like old tech robots. Are and... Like, maybe they're people, but maybe they're just robots. It's, they're, like, really dysfunctional. It's it hard just, to say. It makes the universe less understandable with the rules we were given at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Because For a movie, this is getting kind of, like... Bloated and un, un unintuitive. Un, unintelligible. Yeah. Yes. Either way, Kid wanders into a back room of some bar. Of course he does. And it's, it's saloon. Find, there's a pretty lady there singing a sad song that makes everybody sad because everybody's robots. This is and the same girl we've seen, except now she's more goth. Yeah, now she's blue. Yeah. Because there's only one girl in these movies. Mm-hmm. Ugh. <laughs> Anyways, she's singing and- a song about 
our the our youth and being a child and man everybody's sad because we're all robots and we'll never die and we have memories of our human life that we're all sad about or There's something. There's also some weird mommy complex written into the song. Yeah, which is very uncomfortable with the interactions our main characters had with every adult woman that he's come across. We'll get more into it. Mm-hmm. So anyways, he finds out that the person that knows where the time thing is, is out at the base of a mountain. And he goes out there and it's the desperado guy who has caught magical space disease, which means he's gonna die, but he can't kill Count Space Robot Time because he's <laughs> out of time himself. If it feels like Sean's starting to become inintelligible, that's because at this point, my brain was fried and I had no idea what was going on. We're not even at the halfway point of the movie. I'm so I mean, sorry. We're at about the hour point. Yeah. Of this, this two-hour like... movie. Yeah. So anyways, this guy, who I can only assume is another character from Captain Harlock, because he is the lover of Esmeralda's, and was also a part of Captain Harlock's crew, something... Anyways, he's got evil death disease, and he's like, all right, kid... Use the beam gun thing and kill me and turn me into energy so I can float through space forever? I have no idea what happened here. See, I thought he was trying to become a robot. That would make sense with the plot of this movie, but he's not. He just wants to become energy itself, which succeeds. But he's also dead, so the boy buries him. And then the boy gets the crap beat out of him by... Captain Robot Goons, and so he goes back to the bar to get his gun back, and then he's saved by Space Pirate Captain Harlock, who shows up and beats the crap out of people and kills a robot through the use of milk, because it'll rust him. Well, and it was also like a setup and payoff because when the kid went to the bar, he, he asked, asked the milk. bartender for milk and, and all the adults at laughed at him. And now the cool hero guy is using milk to like defeat the enemy. So it's like a setup and payoff. But Anyways. it's also really weird because at this point it feels like they're setting up that the kid is actually somehow Related. Space Captain Harlock somehow. Because they keep mentioning how much the kid looks like him. And he really does look just like a younger version of this captain guy. Spoilers, he has absolutely nothing to do with Harlock whatsoever. Not related, nothing. Harlock, as far as I can tell, is it's in this movie fan service. for fan service. He's literally here for fan service for fans of the universe. Right. So for the, the plot of this movie, he does nothing. Yeah. He literally shows up and he's like... I'm glad you buried my friend. I beat up those robot guys for you. Here's Good, your gun back. Here's your gun. Good luck on your mission to kill the Count. I'm not going to help. Yeah. And then like also, he Esmeralda's, and Esmeralda's have like a conversation. Esmeralda also shows up and she's like, oh, I could feel it in the force. <laughs> I felt his my, death in the force. Yeah. It's seriously one of those moments where like yeah. the dude dies and Harlark and Esmeralda's just like, oh, He's dead. He's dead. And so they both show up on the planet for some reason. And then they have a His fan energy ser ghost came by and went, I'm dead. Yeah. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But like they have fan servicey moments where she's like, oh no, he's dead. And has a conversation with Harlock. Doesn't matter because the kid goes off. And he's going to go kill the space. He's going to kill Count Robo inside his I think time. It's Count Mecca. Count Mecca inside his time castle. We've not even talked about the Time Castle! <laughs> Is there much to say about the Time Castle? Because for something called the Time Castle, it has, like, no functionality. As far as we know. As far as we know. This movie doesn't really go over it. Anyways, he sneaks in, and he's wandering around just like a medieval castle now. I thought we were in a western movie. but or there's a pirate pir movie. Well, pirates now are in, like... Okay, fine, fine. We're in a space castle, and he finds his stuffed mother's corpse above a fireplace. 
hanging up like a like a deer trophy. Yeah, because I mean that's what the guy said he was gonna do, and we get the payoff for it. We see stuffed dead mom. Isn't that great? Isn't that exactly what we wanted? Note that this movie is made for general audiences. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Mmm. Also, she's naked. Yeah, of course she's naked, but she's got like the the hair covering her titties mm -hmm. because that's how you do it. Whatever. <sighs> he leaves the room and he's he's sad and stuff. Obviously, he goes to a different room and he finds Count Mecca and he's like, "I'm gonna kill you." And Count Mecca's like, "You're too slow." You're too slow. Yeah. Good thing the bandits from Jupiter are here now for some reason. They're just here. They were hiding in cloaks. What? How? Why? They didn't know about this. How they did they get here? They infiltrated into the time castle and they've been like just spying on, on Lord Time Mecca himself for who knows how long, waiting for Kid Desperado to show up. Yeah, I don't know. This is the part of the movie where things go off the rails. Go off, go the, off the rails. The rails. Oh. Literally. Ha. <laughs> Remember when there was a train involved in this movie? Neither do I. Do I. Don't. <laughs> So, <laughs> so there's a big shootout and Count Mecca runs into a special room that will make the castle travel through time or something. And also the blue haired uh, musician gal from the thing is there. And he's, she's also working with him, I guess. Yeah. And he's like, pull the lever, Kronk. <laughs> And she doesn't. She just stands there and lets Time Mecca get killed by the leader of the banditos who explodes because of all the bullets in his belly. Which honestly was pretty badass. He's my favorite character from this by far. He just kind of like thump against the glass. <laughs> and then when he dies, he explodes. Yeah. Like he dies and then his body explodes even though I don't think that's how bullets work. I don't care. My sense, my suspense of disbelief will excuse that one. <laughs> um, but anyway, he's, Anyways. Time Count Mecca is also trying to erode. No, that's the thing. This is the part where it makes no sense because as he dies, he pulls a specific switch. And then because the glass is shattered, I, okay, I have no idea. I'm going to explain what happens. He yes. pulls a lever and then for some reason, whether because that lever did a thing or something, the entire castle begins to turn to rust and dissolve into nothing. I don't know if this castle is supposed to have a function where it can teleport through time, but if you pull that lever, everything outside of his special bubble dies, but because his bubble is destroyed, he also dies? I don't know. It doesn't matter. The I whole castle turns to rust and the girl's like, thank God I was done living. I had a miserable robot life because of course I'm a robot and being a robot is miserable. And thank you for killing the evil robot man that used to be a good person, but when he turned into a robot, he turned evil. And I'm just like, really? Is this the direction we're gonna go? Like, why why don't we even have a conversation here about how, like, the effects on the psyche. the psyche of living forever? Because like, that's obviously like the question that we're getting at, but that's never brought up. And We then, just get straw man arguments of, oh, being a robot makes you evil and sad, so never become a robot, which is what the main character comes to after the castle turns to rust. Yeah, our main and character suddenly decides, I don't want a robot body because all robots are evil. So and let's go like, to the robot planet. Whoa, 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 wait. Okay. And it's just like, wait, kid, every robot person you've met has been like sad about being a robot because they're all, you know, positioned by the author here to make you feel that way. But like, why have you suddenly decided that all robots are evil? All robots must die. And now die. all robots must die. <laughs> like, you have a very narrow-minded... And he's a kid. For, yeah. But like, we're supposed to be relating to what this the kid is saying. This level of absolutism is a bit absurd. Yeah. Because there are just robot people in town. 
Mm-hmm. Do those Just people deserve to die? Lives. No. Yeah. Yes. According to this kid, yes. Mm-hmm. Maytel's totally cool with it. By the way, she did nothing during this whole plot. She was just in the inn or something. Right. Also, Esmeraldas and Maytel and Harlock all know each other. All because know of each course other. they do. Of course they do. Anyways. Which raises some real questions by the time we get to the end of this. Oh, by the but... way, Bandito guys, he's... Or not Bandito. Uh, bullet Belly Man. Bullet Billy? <laughs> belly. Bullet Belly Man. When he is exploding, he's like... Maytel, it's all Maytel. Don't trust Maytel. And I'm like, what? who could have seen her being somehow evil being a thing? Coming. Because she's just letting him go to this planet for no reason. Well, and, and we've helping. also, like, we had this suspicious conversation at the beginning that hasn't been addressed yet. Yeah. Maytel keeps going off by herself to go do things that we aren't privy to. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, she's distrustful. She keeps looking sad off to the side every time the boy and her have a conversation. Also, like, by this point in the movie, the <sighs> boy definitely has the hots for Maydell. Uh, uh, and the teenage girl... The glass girl. Glass lady. Also who has the hots for... Also has, like, a super mega crush on this, what I can only presume as a ten-year-old child. This is one of those movies where the universe bends to the will around the main character where nothing seems to happen or be relevant in this universe except for what's happening to the main character. And if someone interacts with them, that's the most important thing that has ever happened ever. In their lives. Yes. Yeah. It's... It's a little boy fantasy. Yeah. And it's getting really frustrating. Well, it's a little boy fantasy and it's really kind of unsettling and gross that it's been taking, like, it, that it takes itself this seriously. Mm-hmm. Because, like, it, it's taking itself seriously. It's not played for jokes. This is a serious story again, like Yamato. Right, with and, the same kind of tone and, like, expectation of, like, you know, oh, we're saying something deep here, but it's, like, it's really not that deep. Uh, all right, let's continue on. Mm-hmm. We have a half hour left of this movie with one planet to go because now the kid wants to go to the robot planet at the end of the train line, which gives you free robot bodies, and he wants to destroy all the robots. Yeah. And Maytel's like, okay. That sounds good. Let's do it. Yeah. So they get to the planet. Because she has zero personality. Yeah, she's zero. She she is just blonde girl that exists. Mm Mm-hmm. Fine. Sure, whatever. We get to the planet, and it's named Maytel. Apparently nobody knew this. Or the kid somehow didn't know this. And once he gets there, there's robots there, and they're like, Hey! We've been expecting you. Your princessness. How's it going? So, kid's cool and all, but he did kill the robot count, so now we have to turn him into a living... Bolt. Bolt. And we're going to make him as part of our machine planet. Because our planet's entirely made out of machines. And this is where the super evil plot of the planet happens. It's like... You get a free robot body. The the the, the trick is, is that... You become a part of the... Planet. The planet. You're just like a living, sentient, forever screw in the planet. And I'm just like, really? It seems extra like yeah. does a normal bolt not do justice do no you need of course a whole not human soul in the bolt to make it of function course, like, as explained by evil queen mom uh-huh. who's evil and stuff and turned her husband into this heart-shaped pendant that has been talking to maytel the whole time which is what the conversation at the beginning was which, because why is she talking Maytel, to him on the phone then? Uh, Maytel has been going out into the universe for eons or hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. Because, of course, she's like... Actually a robot. She's actually a robot or some... Because her name's literally fucking Metal. Her name is Metal. 
It's may may tell, but it's, it's metal. Meteru. It's metal. Her name is Metal from Planet Metal because that's the other half of her soul. Half of her soul is in the the planet. Anyway, she's been going out and collecting random well-doing people and bring them to this planet and turn them all into bolts and screws to go inside the planet because she's then going to use her sentient dad heart to throw it into the planet and explode it because he's having a lover spat with his wife. Yeah, so... To, she to, to, has to, clar- to, have... to clarify, she is going to out clarify. to... clarify. To clarify, she's going out into the universe because dad told her to, specifically to go find martyrs for this cause of blowing up the metal planet, specifically because mom and dad are having a spat. And so that the evil robots all die. Yeah. Specifically mom. Uh-huh. And so Maytel has been forced to do this by her mom with un which was unwittingly also the plans of dad. Yeah. Because she put these martyr screws in specific key locations of the planet that if she explodes the center, they all just fall apart and the planet will <laughs> blow itself up. You know, I thought it was dumb when we were watching it, but when you really say it out loud, it's so dumb, and it's all thrown at you right here at the end. Right at the end. So anyways, main girl, Maytel, is conflicted about killing half of herself. And, for like, Dooming an entire planet? Yeah. But, like, surprisingly little on that front. Yeah, so a boy has to throw dad's heart into the thing, and the planet explodes, and as they're running away... We find out why she has a human body if she's been a robot. Well, she's been body hopping in human clones for years. And her current body is the kid's mom's body. Because it was just the most beautiful body around. So kid has fallen in love with the clone of his mom. This is awful and gross. This is terrible and bad. Anyways, for they're running and they get back to the train as the planet is falling apart and exploding. Also, Esmeraldas and Harlock have shown up and started blowing up the planet for no reason because it's already exploding. They're but here for fan service they're here again. For fan service. There's no they're reason for them to be it. in this movie. And I guess I, I I could only hope to distract from the fact that we now have a pedophilic relationship incest romance going on. Yeah, it's bad. Anyways, they explode the planet, but mom makes it off of the planet onto the train and she's like, I will kill the boy. Evil mom. Evil mom. We should clarify. Evil robot mom. Yeah. Maytel's mom has made it onto the the train. She's like, I'm going to kill the boy because you took everything from me. So... Maytel is useless and can do nothing. So the glass girl jumps onto her back and explodinates herself to kill evil robot mom. Because she loves the boy so much. And the conductor of the train just picks up the glass shards of her body and throws it out into space from a dustpan because who can be bothered about human life? Am I right? What the hell? We're not even done with this movie. This ending just keeps going and getting more screwed up. They give the boy a piece of her that's supposed to be a glass tear. That and might also be, be her heart. It's supposed to be all like sad and shit, but I'm just... Like, this is disturbing. Oh. This is disturbing. I hate this. Anyway... They get back to Earth. They get back to Earth. And Maytel's like, well, that was fun and all. And the boy's like, I love you and stuff. And the girl's like, yeah, I know. I love you too. And kisses him on the lips in a close-up shot. It is gross. This is, you gotta remember, this is his mom's body. They have had a 
mother-son relationship this entire movie, which we've no. not really talked about. No, they haven't, though, because it's been real heckin' creepy since right at the beginning. Well, that's the thing, because it's both. Yeah. It's been like a, we kind of like each other, but also I'm mothering I'm your mommy. you. Yeah. And that is not okay. Um, well, it's, and then she then gives she gets some on the tr- speech about, like, how, like, they can never be together. And, and she's going she's back to Pluto. She's gotta go to Pluto to, to get, get her, her body. Real body back. So they'll never recognize each other if they see each other again. Which, like, good. I don't want these characters to ever be within, like, a million yards of each other ever again. But also, like, this is bullshit. They could just set a meeting location. To meet somewhere else. Like, the... It's a, you will still, still recognize him. This is dumb. This is so dumb. But also, so she leaves. And then the whole thing wraps up with the boy, like, crying, following after the train, and waving goodbye. Like, ooh, this is a sad moment because our heroes are parting ways. Uh, and then we get a song about how, like, a boy becomes a man and, oh, youth is so Important. fragile and gone so quickly. And I'm like, screw you, movie. This was disgusting. This was disgusting and gross. <sighs> and that was two hours of a man just living out his Mom I want to bone mommy fantasy. And it was awful. <laughs> Japan, please. You need to stop with this. I hate it. And it, I know it doesn't stop. We're probably going to see more of this. Yeah. We're going to see more Galaxy Express 3 9. Yeah, there's another movie. Adieu, Space Galaxy 3 9, in a year or two. And Maytel hasn't given up this body like she said she was going to. Yeah, because she's like. Like, we know, just from, like, the poster, that she's still there. She's the exact same blonde girl. I mean, unless she's just showing up in, like, flashbacks or something. Or she shows up in the same, like, it's like, uh, I'm a different person, but this guy can draw one character, so I'm... Exactly the same. (sighs) I do not suggest watching this movie. That's not even all the problematic crap that, that we could talk about with this. No. Like... Uh, th- there's also the fact that, like, okay, we kind of touched on this briefly, but every single interaction this boy has with every female character he runs across has a very either, like, sexual harassment vibe to it, or, oh, look, I just collected a new mom. Mm-hmm. Or, Both. wow, that woman is evil. Yeah, yeah, or the woman is evil because something, something... About a man. Mm-hmm. And it's every, every single, single one. Every single woman in this universe cannot have a personality that does not revolve around a man. In any in, way. In some point. Like, and evil mom is obsessed with, with dad working with Maytel. Uh, the, the space pirate Esmeralda Slady is... Pining over her lost lover. Right. And, like, that's... Other than her being a stone-cold badass, like, that's her only thing going for her. Mm -hmm. And, like, the badass part just breaks down the moment Moment you mention this guy. Moment brought up. Yeah. Madel is a non-character. Yeah, she's literally just to be a mommy uh, figure. It's so bad. She has no character. She does nothing. The, the, The shadow lady is just, like, a commentary on... Women being women vain, vain about their prettiness or something. Right, and still she, like, obsesses over, like, trying to trap She the wants boy. to kill the boy for some reason, so she stays there with him forever. Why? I don't know. He doesn't ma- <sighs> And then Glass... I think her name's, like, Claire or something. It doesn't Glass matter. Lady also has, like, zero personality other than loving our main character. I'm still upset that she's naked. Yeah, 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 and then there's like, the fact too that like multiple women all in- the women except for maybe Esmeralda's are brutalized at some point for like and in horrific ways in the case of like mom 
Like, yeah. main character's mom. Also, mom was naked underneath the blanket that she had. Yeah. Why? Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Okay, mom is brutally murdered. Uh, Glass Girl explodes. Maytel is just seen naked in the shower and also is a non-character. Uh, Shadow is wearing a promiscuous dress. Right. Uh, evil mom is The evil. only one covered up, but it's because she's evil. <laughs> and she's made of galaxies or something. Yeah. Whatever. And... We haven't even talked about musician blue-haired girl who, oh, yeah. as she's dying, takes off her clothes to sit naked and rust away. Yeah, and, it's just like... and she's also, like, completely obsessed with the, the Count Mecca guy. Mm -hmm. It's... I hate this. Yeah. It's... If you want to check out some of this <sighs> creator's work, don't choose <laughs> Galaxy Space 3-9, Galaxy Express 3-9. I don't know if Harlock is better. We've not experienced it. We right. will eventually because it's coming up with its own movie in like three years. And who knows? I highly doubt this. But who knows? Maybe in the context of the broader franchise of this, this movie isn't as bad as we make it seem. But even still, like all of this is pretty concretely like right there not even subtext it's just text it's right the text of the of movie you. it's so like and like I, this movie has set up and payoff for all of these things for bad choices to be made yeah it, like it, they yeah. wanted to set up that it looks like mom because it is mom and he's in love with mom ew ah yeah I told you guys it would be a longer one. So, to, In talk, to talk about parts of this movie that are not the plot uh -huh. and the characterization, the art style is the exact same art style that we've had. As Yamato. As Yamato. The dude needs to figure out how to draw more women. Seriously. Maybe talk to some women in his life. Maybe meet some other women. Meet any woman ever, please. Yeah. Uh... The animation I, I, itself is nothing spectacular either. It's honestly pretty chopping, and there's a lot of editing choices that are un incredibly unsettling. Yeah, they do this like camera zoom Flash a lot, shutter where, zoom thing, where instead of like doing a smooth zoom, they just like clip, 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 clip to in? zoom in, and it's bad. It's bad and unsettling, and it doesn't help the th the tone, like mm -hmm. where everything is awful. There are a lot of plot beats of this that are very similar to Yamato, but this film just feels like a worse version of Yamato in every way. Yeah. And also... The only quote-unquote better thing about this version is there is more than two girls in the entire cast, but the way that the, the women like, are... Like, <laughs> at what utilized, price? Yeah, it's like... It's all bad. Yeah. Like, all the women are portrayed horribly in this movie. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's a better thing in the end. Uh, <laughs> um, then, like, I also just got to talk about the way that this artist draws kids. Or, like, not even joke necessarily characters. kids. But, yeah, like, joke characters. I don't know. They're, if anyone is under a certain height, this guy draws them with eyes that are that are tiny, like tiny super close together and at the top beans, of their head and at the top of their head and it's really unsettling because it was the doctor from Yamato yeah there is the, the kid in the flashback looks like this and sometimes in the like, present day he kind of looks like it too and it's awful and I hate it the eyes are just wrong it's uncanny also and one of the Harlock characters that if, were on the ship briefly also looks the same yeah it's one of those things that if like everybody in the universe, if this was like a peanut style and everybody, you know, like looked like that, like you'd get used to it. Mm -hmm. But they don't. There's there's anime people and then there's weird short bean people with tiny itty bitty eyes that are way too up up on their head. And it's uh, yeah, yeah. it's weird looking at both in the same shot. Yeah. Yeah. In anyway, this movie did really well at the box office. Oh, great. 
I mean, they made a sequel and then an OVA as well. And it also mm -hmm. got an anime or two or seven. This is Ugh. supposedly directed by Rintaro, um, who's known for directing a whole bunch of other stuff. I didn't write any of it down, but you can look him up. Uh, the mangaka artist is... I'm just going to pass this over to Sean. Leiji, or maybe Reiji Matsumoto. Yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Matsumoto, sir. I don't know if you're still alive or not, because this was made in the 70s during the pinnacle of your success. But why? <laughs> no, you're probably not watching, you know a review online of something you did like 50 years ago <laughs> <laughs> just probably got better uh, shit to do but you know mm -hmm. this is not aged well i'll just say that yeah that's gonna be it for this review uh -huh. i would say we've talked for a long oh god <laughs> uh just looked at how long the recording has been uh long ones usually aren't good <laughs> Join us back here next time for another Japanese film, but this time from a third studio yet, Tokyo Movie Shinsha, and we have another sports anime movie! Yes! These are the same people that brought us volleyball! Yes! And we have Aim for the Ace! Tennis! Tennis! I'm excited! Give me the stupid sports ball! Please, something good. The last three movies have gone down in quality continuously. Yeah. Please don't let this be worse. Please let this at least be stupid, silly. <laughs> Thank you.